as I'm writing down some, some notes this morning uh, about the press conference, uh, you know, I always think uh, that when, when you have this opening day press conference, it's always the week of the season. And so in baseball, because we start so late, you know, unlike, you know, football and then basketball a little later, you know, in the fall, and then, of course, it's baseball here in February. Uh, there's all these official, un unofficial start dates. It's, you know, the road to Omaha starts in August when we start our first practice, and then maybe when you come back in January. Uh, but, you know, certainly when you get to this point, uh, and a lot of familiar faces here with the media, uh, I always think this is, you know, this is game week. So this, this is really the official start of the season. Um, as thank you for uh, trucking through some of the um, – Construction, as Ross says, you know, you know, uh, pardon our progress outside, but uh, as you can tell, uh, the stadium's uh, just about complete and ready to go for Friday. The new club level uh, behind home plate looks terrific, and the guys are cleaning it up. Uh, the baseball performance center uh, is coming along. As you may or may not know, uh, the, the the finish or completion date is supposed to be in April, uh, but the the cages and the pitching indoor we've already used and have been using, you know, now for for several weeks. And, and thankfully, because of all the rain and and some of the temperatures, you know, that's been uh, you know be, been very important. And uh, glad glad to be in there. Uh, as we start today, and as I wrote some things down, uh, it's amazing. A lot different than than last year. You know, last year we welcomed a lot of new faces. This year it seems like the new faces uh, are administrative faces. You know, new sports information director and uh, Brandon Lee, uh, marketing Jenny Garrett, uh, Scott Wyatt with uh, video productions. I got two uh, new director of operations and Alex Swenson and Chris uh, Guderis. And so a lot of a lot of new faces that are out of uniform. Uh, that, that help us uh, compete every single day. But, uh, you know, last year they were new faces in the uniform. So this year a little different. Last year, if you remember, you know, we talked about uh, the number one ranked recruiting class, you know, at that time. And a lot of these young guys, you know, stepped on the field for the first time last year. And uh, we had 20, uh, I believe, if I remember right, 29 of the 35. 29 of the 35 were either freshmen or sophomore. We only had six uh, upperclassmen, six juniors or seniors. Last uh, 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 was it Sunday night, we had a junior-senior dinner at my house. We had 14. And so we've over, uh, over doubled the upperclassmen already. And a lot of those uh, sophomores obviously played last year. And, uh, and some of them you know, played really well. You know, a lot of those you know, freshmen that you know, stepped out on the uh, field for the first time had great first years. Guys like Will Etheridge and Ryan Rollison and Houston Roth and garnished uh, freshman All-American honors and uh, had great freshman campaigns. And some of those freshmen didn't play as well. And, uh, uh, but the good news for us is they were, they were out there a lot. And they gained a lot of experience. And at, at times, uh, I look back and you know, I've said this to the team. I've said this to, to the coaches that you know, I, I blame myself that at times I think we leaned on them too much. You know, and uh, left them out there, and and uh, probably you know not the, the, not the best move by me. But the result of that, uh, I think this year is where you look at guys that maybe didn't quite have the freshman year that they wanted, uh, had great uh, freshman fall or sophomore falls, and are ready to compete. You know, this year uh, and in a, in a league uh, that uh, is very unforgiving. And so when you don't play well, you know, uh, it, it, it kind of uh, gets exaggerated quickly in your batting average and your ERA. And uh, I think those guys are, are chomping at the bit, you know, for another chance, you know, in the Southeastern Conference. Uh, you know, last year uh, we, we didn't return a lot. But this year we, after losing just Bortles and Blackman, as far as uh, position players that played every single day, you know, we returned seven of the starting nine, and uh, which, you know, was, you know, almost the direct opposite of last year. And when you look at a pitching staff that, that really did pitch it pretty well last year, I think we were ranked fourth in the SEC in ERA, and we returned seven of the nine best uh, earned run averages uh, from last year. So an experienced staff, you know, experienced uh, position players usually makes uh, for a pretty good season, and that's why we're so excited. Uh, so with that, I'll um, – does anybody listen to David Kellum on Reb Talk? Parrish? Every now and then. Every now and then. Did you listen last night? Not last night. Not last night. So if you listened last night, 
Chuck, you listened last night. You listened last night. We, we released the, the starting rotation. Um, and so you'll have to start important information on Rep Talk. So you're going to have to start listening. Uh, Friday, uh, we'll start off with Ryan Rollison on the mound force. Uh, Saturday, Brady Feigl. And on Sunday, James MacArthur. Uh, you know, it's one of the things that wasn't supposed to be so suspenseful, and I joke about it, uh, but it was one of the things that I thought uh, this year uh, was a tough decision. A lot of times, you know, you're, you know, uh, it's not as difficult. You, you return, you know, maybe an ace, or uh, there's some other guys trying to make their way to the, the starting rotation. But when I look at, as I mentioned, the three freshman All-Americans last year, uh, people forget two years ago we had three freshman All-Americans, Brady Feigl and and uh, and uh, James MacArthur were, 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 you know, a couple freshman All-Americans from two years ago. Uh, we got a lot of depth and a lot of talent. And I thought, along with the guys I've mentioned, guys like Houston Roth and Greer Holston and Will Etheridge, also, you know, have competed, you know, for the last six months as, you know, for one of those roles as a weekend starter. But as we start the first weekend, those guys will find themselves in the bullpen, which uh, just adds a lot of depth to an already, I think, uh, deep uh, bullpen. Uh, the, the the question that's asked a lot is the closer. Uh, this year, there's no secret that we returned Dallas Wolfolk, uh, who's on many uh, preseason. Uh, polls uh, as a uh, as a closer and a guy at the end of the game. Uh, he's a guy that uh, pitched for the USA team in that same role. So you know to, to wear USA across your chest and uh, represent the best uh, that our country has to offer as far as baseball amateur baseball players. You know Dallas I think is tested not only in our league uh, but internationally and excited to have him back there. And of course uh, Will Stokes who enters his fourth year and uh, has pitched so many important games. As we look around the infield and outfield, on Friday, uh, starting in left field will be Thomas Dillard. Thomas was one of those, you know, uh, uh, highly touted freshmen that started last year, uh, mostly in left field. Uh, another switch uh, for Will Golson, as those that follow us know that, you know, Will's a senior, senior captain, was elected captain by his uh, teammates at the end of the fall. Uh, Will moves to his fourth position in four years, where he'll start on opening day in center field uh, with Ryan Rollison playing right. So. Those guys almost flip-flopped, and the reason uh, that they did that is because I felt Ryan's going to play some infield this year and just didn't want to move the uh, center field spot around a lot. I thought it was better and, and uh, made a lot more sense to put Ryan in right field. I think they're uh, pretty much interchangeable. I think their skill set's very similar. Both are great athletes. Both can really run and defend and throw. And so uh, Will in center and, and Ryan uh, on opening day will start in right field. Around the infield, uh, at, at third base, uh, could be uh, a couple freshmen, uh, one Tim Elko, another freshman Tyler Keenan, uh, both physical hitters, uh, both uh, solid defenders. Uh, both will add some 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 power, I think, to the to the lineup. One's right-handed, Tim uh, being right-handed, and and Tyler being left-handed. Uh, at shortstop, Greg Kessinger returns. Uh, will start at shortstop on opening day. At second base, the the other position, you know, uh, open from last year's uh, departure from Tate Blackman, is uh, you should look for Jacob Adams, a junior college transfer, or Anthony Servidio at second base on opening day. And then at first base, um, you, you have Cole Zabowski that returns, uh, but we also return uh, Nick Fortes. Uh, Nick is a, a tremendous catcher, uh, but likely on opening day we'll put him at first base and start Cooper Johnson behind the plate. Uh, Cooper uh, has worked really hard with uh, with Coach Clement offensively and probably made as much strides as, as anybody I've seen over the past year offensively, so we're excited about him. But I also think Nick Nick will catch for us, uh, and I think he'll catch this weekend for us. I think he'll get a start behind the plate uh, there as well. And so, uh, as you can tell, especially guys, the beat guys that, 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 that you know uh, follow us and write about us so much, when you say these names, there's not a ton of new names uh, mentioned. There's a lot of guys that return off of last year's team, like I said, that uh, tons of experience and a team that – uh, last year that you know was good, just not uh, good enough often enough, you know, to where uh, you know uh, to compete in this you know, tough league of the Southeastern Conference. Uh, 
I think one of the big uh, uh, things this year, everybody will talk about, you know, the offense. But, uh, you know, we put a lot, and because I work with the pitchers as well, and we talk to the staff a lot about the pitchers. You know, last year, um, as good as we were on the mound, we weren't good enough on the mound. We weren't good enough to compete, you know, on Friday night in the SEC. And if you want to compete in our league, you have to compete on Friday night. And I think, you know, Ryan, uh, you know, uh, gives us the best shot to do that, you know, right away. So uh, with that, I'll open it up for questions. Yes, Chuck. Ooh, I missed it. Sorry. Got it written down and I missed it. I don't look down enough. Uh, Tim Rowe and Chase Cockrell, but obviously could be any of the guys that I've mentioned that may not start in the field. But uh, that's a, probably a good, solid, you know, right-handed, left-handed, you know, DH looking for you, uh, for you that, you know, both of them uh, have, you know, tremendous power. Uh, Chase has had a real good spring. Uh, you know, Tim's you know was maybe one of our most consistent hitters and one of those newcomers last year. Although not a junior college transfer, not a freshman, uh, but I thought Tim you know had a real good year for us last year and look for him to uh, add to that in his uh, senior campaign. You think, yes. You said that uh, Will was named captain by his teammates. Do you look for Will to maybe fill that senior leadership role, maybe left behind by someone like Colby? Oh, no doubt. And uh, I didn't mention it, but Brady Feigl as well was elected uh, teammates and I mean uh, captain by his teammates as well. And, uh, you know, Will's, Will's one of those guys doesn't say a lot. You know, he's, he's one of those quiet leaders, uh, but nobody doubts his competitiveness. I mean, when, when you look at Will and watch him play the game and watch, you know, just the competitive fire, uh, I think that adds a lot. We, and we've challenged not just only uh, Will and, and Brady, but other older guys. Uh, I know we use that phrase a lot that, you know, you lead by example. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that phrase. You know, I think leadership is more than that. I don't think it's just doing it the right way and showing up for practice the right, you know, at, the, at the right time and getting good grades. And those guys do that. And they certainly you know, fit the bill as far as you know, checking all the boxes of doing the things the right way. But the other big thing about leadership and the most important thing is how, how much better do you make the other players around you? And, uh, and I think in their senior year uh, and Brady being a redshirt junior, uh, just watching them this fall and watching them reach out to some of the younger guys, you know, they have some some of those great qualities that, that you need in that those positions. Yes. Who do you think are some of your uh, candidates to replace the power you're losing with Tate and Cole? Well, you know, this standing here last year, remember Tate didn't hit as many home runs as he had a great senior year and, you know, really the kind of the, the home run power maybe we, we thought would happen you know, as a freshman or sophomore. Um, but certainly Tim Rowe, I think Thomas Dillard, uh, when you look at the two, you know, who could, whoever could start on the corners in Elko and, and, and Keenan and then over at first base, Zabowski. Uh, I think Nor uh, Nick Fortes is going to have a tremendous year. Um, from really about midseason last year when he started becoming an everyday player uh, to now, I, I don't think there's a doubt he's the best hitter every single day that shows up for, for us. And so um, I th even though he's not a big imposing guy, I think he's, he's, he's got a chance to hit some home runs here. What have you seen from Thomas and, and Dillard in, in the uh, fall ball and early spring? Do you think he'll hit for a higher average? Yeah, that's why we put him out there. Uh, that's just a little... Um, Thomas was recruited, uh, you know, as a catcher. We put him in left field because of his bat. You know, Thomas is, uh, I think, going to be a, a mainstay in the middle of the lineup. I really, uh, you know, offensively, power-wise, average-wise, uh, I think he's going to, that, that's how he's going to earn his pay, so to speak. And uh, uh, excited about him to kind of, you know, turn those, those numbers around from his freshman year. Lead off is the tough one. You know, uh, I think there's probably a good chance that one of those second basemen, Servideo or Adams, leads off, you know, on opening day. But we'll have to play with it a little bit. You know, some of the other guys that, that run well probably aren't your most prototypical leadoff guys. They don't take a lot of pitches. Guys like Olenek and others that, you know, Golson, you know, they're not your – you know, prototypical leadoff guys. They're good hitters and guys that I think are valuable in the lineup. Uh, but I think Servideo and, and Adams probably fit that, you know, off the bat at least. You know, but we've got to make sure they're, they're ready to play as well. But, you know, uh, I think both of those guys have a shot to lead off, even this weekend. What are your thoughts on your non-conference weekends? Looks like you could have three top 100 teams in that, in that mix. Long Beach. Three weekend. top 100. Um, when we look at the schedule, you know, as you know, a lot of years when you put it out, 
you know, you're trying to play teams that uh, obviously are going to challenge you. Um, but the truth is you don't know what you're going to get. You don't know that Winthrop's going to be the, the conference champion from last year. Long Beach is going to be the conference championship champion team from last year. So two of the first four weekends are conference champions. Uh, and then, of course, you got a, a conference pitcher of the year, you know, uh, Winthrop and, uh, and Palachek. And, uh, and so uh, I think it's, it's, it's pretty competitive. Of course, Tulane's going to be much better than they, they were, you know, a year ago. I think with the coaching change, some Sometimes that happens, and we've talked about that. Where you know, sometimes a new coach gets in there. Sometimes the kids play better than you know uh, than they're really supposed to, and sometimes they don't. And uh, I, I see Tulane being much improved from last year. So uh, I, I look at this, you know, four weeks is, uh, and it's good for us. I think we need that. I think, uh, uh, you know, you need something to not only test you and get you ready for the SEC, but I think this team needs us. You know, uh, last year we played a, a, a really good schedule and, and had success, you know, early and then got beat up a little bit over there in Houston. Uh, but this team, you know, with returning so many players, as I've mentioned, uh, I don't, I don't think that's necessarily going to phase us, but I think that the competition will be good. Yes. With that year of experience under their belt, how hungry are the young, slash more experienced guys to get back to the postseason? Well, I, I certainly think that's probably a better question for them, you know, to, to, to answer. I think all of us, you know, are, are ready to start anew. I mean, uh, I think uh, last year we don't make it to the postseason for the, you know, for only the third time. and. Uh, in my tenure here, and and uh, that's when you don't make it the postseason. Obviously, that's a that's a big blow. Uh, but these guys, you know, there's different things that you've heard, and we've challenged them with, you know, and you know, getting to Omaha again, and, and hosting a regional, and, and being the team that you know we're supposed to be, and that the expectations are for the, for this program. You know, when you look, you know, behind us, and you know, you got, uh, you know. Maybe a thousand students out there, you know, uh, sitting in the drizzling, you know, cold, waiting to put a chair out for Friday afternoon. You know, uh, that's pretty cool, and the expectations are there. And I think uh, the the players, you know, in our program realize that, and I think they're they're excited. I think you know, motivation comes from a lot of different areas, but certainly, I think we're we're, we're excited to turn the page on last year and get started. Any freshman arms turn your Probably the, the 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 most impressive you know freshman arm has been Jordan Fowler, uh, left-handed uh, uh, pitcher. Uh, Max Trophy's pitched well uh, you know this spring since we've been back, uh, and it's going to be tough for those guys. I mean they'll they'll get they'll get their opportunities obviously, uh, but with as much depth, I think that's why it's you, you don't hear as many new names. Uh, Austin Miller, another you know now he's a junior college transfer, you know true sophomore. Uh, but that's why you didn't mention as, as many of those guys. Uh, not as not as many uh, uh, vacancies as we had last year coming in. No, he's good anywhere. But what makes Edwards so good? Kind of on that back end. I think he had 19 straight. Yeah, and he he really like you know Holston and 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 Roth really can do uh, and have done. Even Feigl, you know Feigl you know pitches well out of the bullpen and and pitches well as a starter. Um, uh, the slider is just tremendous, and uh, being able to, sh you know, be a strike thrower. And another thing that people don't talk about is you can really control the running game. He's got a great move. Had a great move as a freshman, which you don't usually see from a right-hander. Uh, you know, good athlete, and you got to want to be there. And uh, that's the other thing is you got to want to be, you know, in the moment. And um, it's not like a starter where you kind of work your way into it, you know, and uh, you, you work your way into these jams and then work your way out. A lot of times out of the bullpen, you don't, you didn't work yourself in anything. You're handed the ball and the jam is already there and your job is to, to get out of it. And uh, he did that well for us last year. But he also had some good starts. And that's why, you know, we've talked, when I talked to Carl Lafferty, our pitching coach, I mean, that, that was one of the discussions is he's so good out of the bullpen, but let's not forget, you know, the goal is to put the best three guys that give us the best opportunity, you know, uh, you know Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And uh, unfortunately for him, or fortunately, depending on how you want to look at it, uh, you know, we picked three other guys to start the, the, the uh, you know, the, the year out. But, um, you know, they know that every day you got to come and earn your job. And so uh, the good news for us is we got some guys in the bullpen, and if somebody uh, can handle the the role as a starter, we can move some other guys there that you know certainly can handle it. Anything else? With uh, obviously the youth from last year is a big thing, and you mentioned that every guy obviously gains some sort of experience. But what are maybe some of the differences you've seen in the off season opposed to last year? Maybe like guys 
been a role now, you know, is it more like they have the role to move forward? You know, what are some of the things you've seen? I think just everybody being a realist and, and, and not worrying about things that they can't control and, you know, am I going to be a starter? Or am I going to do this? Just trying to improve every single day. I think, you know, uh, I think when you come as a freshman and some guys can fight through it, but I always say that, you know, the, the, the toughest thing that, that I find as a coach is to get those freshmen to play like they're capable of as quickly as possible. You know, so many kids come in, and for the first time in their life, uh, they weren't the best player. You know, they're they're not the the, the best hitter or the best pitcher out there, and uh, that's tough. And then you start to worry: Hey, am I going to play? Am I going to redshirt? Am I going to get cut? Am I going to you know all these negative thoughts which they never have thought about in their entire life? But now all of a sudden, you know, that happens. You know, and uh, and so you know when I watch you know guys come back after you know their freshman year, a lot of them realize that all those worries about things that they can't control didn't make them better baseball players. You know, all it did was make them their life a lot more, you know, uh, you know difficult and, and felt a lot more pressure. And that's not the great the best recipe for success. And I think we saw that in a lot of our guys, you know, this fall where you know guys had really good falls. Guys like Gray and and uh, Thomas and and Cooper who I talked about his improvement offensively and, and guys, you know, seem looser and, and more confident uh, than they did maybe a year ago.